today's toy spot we are looking <laughs> looking at a substantially large box we're having a look today at the NECA Batman Classic TV Series one quarter scale Batman figure. Shop for collector figures, statues, prop replicas, and more at Alter Ego Comics and earn rewards points that can be redeemed on any items, no exclusions. Spot would like to apologize because, again, this figure is not going to fit all on camera. It's extremely large, and Spot unfortunately has to get all of this kind of off his normal backdrop just so I can show you guys everything that's going on with this figure. Um, the box is neat. I mean, I like the box. The box has a vintage look to it. Down below, we have a picture of the Cape Crusader, once again, in his more iconic, classic 60s uh, uh, look to him. Uh, Spot actually picked this up from the folks over at uh, Alter Ego Comics. Um, uh, luckily, I was able to find it there because local retail, <laughs> no luck whatsoever. Spot couldn't find this local retail whatsoever. Uh, spinning around the box, once again, the side of the box, some nice artwork from, not really so much from the series, but uh, some artwork reminiscent of the, uh, the, the classic TV series. And around on the back, the Batmobile featured down below, some of the features that are available with Batman. Hey, Batman's doing the bat 2 -C along with some lettering, pow, kapow, everything that you would normally find with the Cape Crusader, in the old vintage Adam West series, you're going to get here as well. And at the very, very top, there is Batman, with wings spread, with his cape spread. Uh, what I am going to do, Spot's going to try his best to uh, get this all opened up. I'm going to take a break, I'm going to get this opened up, and when we come back, we are going to get a better look at the Batman one quarter scale action figure. There's more in your way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. While Spot does his best to try to get this figure to stand, and I gotta say, standing is not the easiest thing to do with this particular figure. Let's have a camera bring it down, bring all the way down, and let's have a look at the accessories that make up this Batman figure. And again, Spot wants to apologize that you're gonna see a lot of extra stuff in this review extra things around <laughs> around my desk as we're having a look at this Batman. Needless to say, though, the accessories that come with Batman, he does come with all, uh, several different hands. Currently, I've got two hands. He's up there. I've got two hands already on the figure, but he does come with a holding hand. Two different kind of holding hands, I should say. One really kind of more so for the Batarang, one kind of more so for his communicator. And he's also got closed fists, Punching fists, hands as well. Uh, the pegs aren't so much an issue. Changing out hands is not really so much of an issue. It's just the fact that you're doing it on such a large scale figure. I'll show you that in a second. You also get yourself an extra pouch that you can clip on to the, uh, the bat utility belt. A little clip on the side there. It's a... Uh, I was going to say, it's not a... Well, it is a brittle. It's, it's pretty brittle. If you're not careful and, you know, if you put it on, try to take it off too quickly, this could break. This little clip on the back. Speaking of other clips, you got another clip that can go onto the back of his util utility belt, indicating on the front that it holds the Batarang. This plays up to the joke, the ongoing joke with Batman, and the fact that everything he carried with him was on his utility belt. He simply just reached around to the back, behind his cape, and pulled out whatever he needed. It would have been awesome if NECA had included the bat shield. It would be completely ridiculous, but then, then again, that's the way it is in the, the classic TV series. This does actually open up as well. It's just a little, little snap here, and this opens up. And you can pull out the batarang. The batarang does fold open, and there's actually even a hole where you can feed, and Spot didn't really feed this, but you can feed the supplied rope through the Batarang and tie it off. 
I, again, I haven't done that. There's the rope right there. There's the Batarang. But the Batarang, if your preference isn't the foldable Batarang, Batman does come with just a regular Batarang as well. Same idea, same rope, and same detailing really on the Batarang from the non-foldable one to the foldable one. They're pretty much exactly the same. Uh, but you can take the Batarang and find the appropriate hand. I'm going to do this with the hand as opposed to trying to get it into Batman. Uh, just so you can see, yes, he does hold the Batarang very easily. Very easily indeed. Uh, also, the last accessory that comes with Batman is the Bat Communicator. A little Bat Walkie Talkie. It has antenna that you can extend like so. And you've got the Bat Walkie Talkie. That Bat Walkie Talkie can be held in his flat hand, more open palm, and you've got the Batarang, or you've got the Bat Walkie Talkie like that. Now, like I said, I mean, changing out the hands isn't so much an issue. You just kind of have to wiggle the hand, wiggle, 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 and pop it out. I wouldn't just pull it. If you're gonna pull it, it could run the risk of breaking off. But you just take the hand, wiggle it back in, and it pops easily into the socket like so. Um, other details, I guess, as we get further away from Batman's groin, but as we move the camera further up, he does also have, of course, his bat utility belt, which does actually have this little section right here opens up, and you've got the bat communicator. I think this was also the same button, not quite, they of course, they change the utility belt depending on what episode they need that utility belt for. But I think this was also the button where Batman was in the pit, if I'm not mistaken, the pit from Catwoman. And she says, she tells Batman that there are two doors. One leads straight to her. The other one leads to a ferocious man-eating tiger. And then, of course, she says, so what's it going to be, Batman? The lady or the tiger? And Batman turns this up and splits the ear, I use the quotation mark, splits the ear of the tiger, and that's how he's able to defeat the tiger. That closes up, just snaps into place, and again, really nice detailing. It's, I can't take anything away from the, the job that NECA did on the figure. I think it's a really good looking figure. The problem is, is that Spot's going to move the camera out, it's just too much Batman. Uh, having a look, though, at Batman's face, Batman's face is quite nice. You can see that NECA really did a fantastic job, and even though Spot has not picked up the 89 series Batman, the 89 movie Batman Michael Keaton, I don't know between what I've seen of it in stores and I've seen of the Adam West Batman, I think NECA did a better job on the Adam West Batman than I did than I think they did on the 89 Batman. The likeness on Adam West is definitely spot on. You can even tilt his mask up, and you can kind of see the underside of his face. Uh, the mask is not removable, it's sculpted in, but uh, you know what, it's a good looking figure. Now, Hot Toys, Hot Toys is gonna be producing a 1-6 scale figure, which surprisingly enough is smaller than this figure. This figure is 18 inches, but NECA's gonna, uh, uh, Hot Toys is gonna be producing a Adam West Batman. Now, if you don't, if you can't afford a three hundred dollar figure, two hundred to three hundred dollar figure, uh, the NECA figures are a good alternative, being that this particular Batman is only about eighty to a hundred dollars, depending on where you're able to pick him up. Um, comparatively, I think the detailing on the NECA version is on par to what we will get with the Hot Toys piece. Obviously, this is just more um, a simplified version of Batman, but still. We're gaining and maintaining all the details that we really like with the Adam West character, Adam West Batman. His cape, as you can see, is chained. There's a little fastener that you can unhook this cape and you can remove the cape altogether from the figure. I won't do that because there really is no re real reason to remove the cape. It just means that there's something else that I would have to peg back on. But uh, the clasp looks like it's quite secure. The cape definitely isn't going to come off or anything like that. And some really nice detailing around the cowl. I mean, the cowl even has like little folds, little 
tucks and everything else that you would come to expect if this was a real prop. So again, really nice work by NECA. The torso piece, and again, Spot apologizes that I have to kind of do this gorilla style. The figure though is quite large. The bat emblem looks really nice. It looks like it is a, a stitched on or, or applied on decal um, to the bat suit. The bat suit I think is very Adam West. It's got the little wrinkles on the sides. I'll just move the arm out of the way here. The wrinkles on the sides, very realistic in design. And uh, really the texturing that they put on the suit as well gives it that look that it's a real material. And uh, again, a really nice job. Following the same, and Spot's going to go back down to the Batman's groin, but following the same trend with their six inch figures, the articulation in the legs are underneath this rubber lower torso piece. This this lower under ruse section, while really nicely detailed, is more of a rubber piece that's just covering and concealing the articulation joints in the legs and uh, in, in the waist section as well. Um, again, my biggest problem with this figure, and I probably sound like a broken record, is it's way too big. Um, you're taking really the core idea of a six inch figure, which it's such a shame that NECA could not have gotten the rights to six inch figures for things that ultimately went to companies like Mattel. Mattel did produce very nice Batman six inch version figures, but if NECA had only had the rights to produce it, we would have got such amazing, incredible pieces. What we end up having to get though is what we could have gotten in a six inch version, just way too big. Again, there's the bottom of Batman's legs and there is, <laughs> at the very top, there's the top of Batman. He is just way too big. And I guess my biggest problem too is when you get a figure like this that's using articulation that would be intended for a six inch figure, you're putting extra pressure, extra stress on those joints. My biggest problem, my biggest concern is these legs. These legs feel loose and they may be securely fastened in, knock on wood, they may be fastened in properly to the lower torso, but because Batman is such a large piece and so heavy up top, to get him to stand properly, I keep feeling like if I am even able to get him to stand, I'm putting a lot of pressure on these joints to get the figure to stand up. Um, but I mean, it's, it's so painful because this figure is so nice my biggest gripe, though, is the fact that he is so incredibly tall. Having a look at the articulation, Batman's head does rotate left and right, as well as up and down via a ball joint. Uh, when you get to his upper torso, his upper torso appears to be on a ball joint. It wiggles back and forth, up and down. Not really a lot, though. Uh, we move the cape just out of the way. And he's got hinge and socket shoulders. They do move out. Uh, the arms move forward and back. He does have a rotation in the bicep, a double bend at the elbow, and a rotation and bend at the hand. Uh, this articulation, especially the double bend in the elbow, definitely helps Batman. <laughs> if you want to have Batman do the bat 2 c So that's a really nice touch, and definitely could not have done that without the double bend in those elbows. But again... The real problem for me are these legs. Uh, the legs do go forward and back and out, but the whole time I'm moving it, I feel like these legs are going to break off. I don't know how and how durable these pegs are that to take a peg that was intended for a smaller scale figure and increasing the size of the, the parts that you're bending, I worry that if I'm bending this too much, that peg is going to break right off. Um, as for his lower legs, the same idea. He's got a bend in the leg, a bend in the knee, and a rotation in the foot. But you can even see, like, even bending the knee, I'm extremely careful with. In fact, when I was bending the, the elbow, I had to kind of wiggle it slowly a little bit first to get it to bend that much. The same thing could be said for the knee. If you're doing anything on the larger joints, bend them very slowly. Just kind of wiggle them back and forth until you can start getting them to relax. Because um, if they're not loose enough, yeah, again, that may potentially break off. The legs are on a uh, kind of a pivot, and there's also a bend at the toe. But everything really on the figure's joints 
extremely stiff and again makes bending him uh, all the much more difficult to do. Part of me really wants to love this figure and I think to some extent I really do. You're taking a, a property which I have always loved as, since I was a kid and you're giving it to a company that can handle the, prop the property well. NECA I think did a fantastic job on the sculpt. The likeness is definitely there. Uh, the articulation, again, phenomenal. And the, all the accessories that you're getting, you're getting a really good looking Batman. The problem is, though, because you don't have, because they didn't have the licensing uh, to handle a six inch property, they're ultimately giving us a figure that I think is just way too big. I would say this is more so for a casual Batman fan. Uh, not so much for a casual Batman fan, but more a fan, a diehard Batman fan, who A, has the space to accommodate a 18-inch figure. But on top of that, you're taking a figure that, for all intents and purposes, has articulation intended for a smaller version of itself, and you're putting a lot of stress on a figure that moving things on him may become very difficult indeed. Um, again, I would say for a die-hard Batman collector, this figure would be ideal, but for everybody else, I think it's just way too much Batman. He's too, he's too top-heavy, and I really worry about those joints. Uh, Batman, I'm going to give him... I really want to give him... You know what? On a sculpt level, I'm going to give him a 9. However, though, I have to kind of take points away because, again, he is just too big, he's too bulky, and again, I worry about these joints. So for that, I might even drop it back down to about an 8.5 for Batman. Definitely get him, though, if you're a Batman fan, but for all other, for all other collectors out there, I would say that this figure is probably something you might want to pass on. Um, today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the NECA... <laughs> We might, might as well just have called it my first Batman because the Batman is just, it's big. But we're looking though today at the 18 inch Adam West Batman. Thanks for watching as you always do guys. And certainly again, Spot thanks you guys for watching his videos and apologizes that this particular video, so much more than my backdrop you had to end up seeing just to get this guy all in camera. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.